Alrighty, folks, time to play some head games. <laughs> On the XS11 project. Probably not the kind you guys are thinking of, though. Oh, God, where's this going? Mm -mm -mm. But if you think that this is the first time any innuendous action has occurred on this bench, you'd be wrong. Is that even a word? All right, folks, welcome back. As I said, we're gonna be getting into the head. And I promised we we're gonna get right into number four exhaust, which is right here. So I'm gonna use my valve spring compressor. Let's get it adjusted up. And uh, we'll uh, get this valve out and take a look at that um, uh, valve stem seal and the valve stem and the whole bit. You know, the whole kit and caboodle in here. Let's see where we're at. I might adjust it down here instead. This is a Motion Pro, I think. Uh, yeah, Motion Pro uh, T6 valve spring compressor. So this is a really nice unit. And you can, he said unit. And you can find the bottom of the valve squarely just by wiggling around like this because the valve's got dome shape to it on the bottom. And then, oh, sometimes those are tight. Those keepers on the, uh, the top of the valve, the plate. There it goes. All you got to do is reach in and take the keepers out. Now, come on, stop moving. There's one, the other. Now, very gently, you let off. Top of the valve. Retainer. There's, like a lot of these, there's two springs in it. There's an outer and an inner spring. Sometimes they have it listed where it goes a certain way. So we'll just put it in the magnetic dish right now in the direction that they came out. Well, it looks like the valve stem seal is actually turning with the valve right now. That shouldn't happen. That thing should be absolutely stationary unless it's something weird. Let me show you what I mean. The whole thing is turning. That ain't right. I don't think so, at least. I haven't seen one like that before. Okay, number four. Yeah, let's not put that there. Let's put it up here. Yeah, that valve stem seal is as loose as a goose on there, it looks like. It's just wiggling all around. All right, let me get a pick tool and we'll pry that out, see how easy it comes out. If it pops right out, then there's another, re there's another, um, another example of uh, the fact that this thing is definitely not tight on there. So that's not supposed to be spinning. Very weird. Oh, it's like loose. Valve guide's tight. This thing is just loose as hell in there. I mean, I, I don't ever remember one of these spinning. I mean, that shouldn't be the way. That shouldn't be that way. That should absolutely not spin. Um, so, yeah, this thing is definitely bypassing. There's no question about it. There's This thing should not be spinning on top of the on top of the valve guide. No way. It's supposed to, in fact, when you put these things on, I mean, they go on hard. you got to push them on, and they snap in place. So, uh, yeah, it's not torn. But um, it sure don't look good. Let's check it on the diameter of the valve itself. Now this part's not that bad. It's actually got a pretty good feel to it. But where it was sitting down in the valve guide, um, no, no effing way. Let's put it back on and see what it looks like. But a hell of it. That that's doesn't that doesn't even go on hard. Yeah, you know what? It, there is no way that that. See, let me let me show you this again. There's no way a valve stem seal should be loose like that. No way, Jose, or Hose B. Well, there's part of your problem, lady. Yeah. All right. Well, 
We're going to do, let me, well, you know what? I need to organize these valves first. Uh, I need to go get baggies and uh, put the um, valves and the springs in individual baggies so I know what cylinder they come out of or spot in the head. These are original, look at that. These are original valves, of course, because you see the uh, tuning fork pattern on there for Yamaha. -ha. Can you see that? So that's cool. Can you see that now? Doesn't look too, too bad. I mean, it's definitely got some crap on it, so. Let me doing some valve work. I'm not sure if it'll be machine shop level or in-house, in but we'll figure that out. I'm mainly interested in verifying the oil situation and with that one, um, you know, doing what it's doing so loose, I mean, you get all that oil in there. There's no question in my mind it would actually go around this valve stem seal on the bottom here because that's not supposed to rotate. It's supposed to be nice and tight, so I would say this is definitely suspect. I'm going to do number one exhaust now because <clears throat> that one seemed to be the best one, and we'll compare the two, and then we'll take the rest of them out. I'm really curious to see... What in the hell the comparison is between the number four and number one. I mean, there's no way that that should be doing that. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that one's turned in too. It feels really loose on there. I've never seen them with there with that loose. I mean, it's wobbling all around. Same deal. <clears throat> all right, let's bag this one. And we'll try an intake. Yeah, this number one intake is still moving, but I, I tell you what, I've never seen a, a exhaust stem seal that uh, would spin around. It's always been real tight. So you know, otherwise, how's it going to seal off? So, but it's a lot tighter than the than the exhaust side. So I think that pretty much tells you right now that these stem seals are definitely shot. Um, I, I would call, you know, I'd be honest with you, I'd rather see a um, an absolute, uh, you know, torn or completely separated one or something, especially on number four, but, um, you know, this will do. There's no question. I mean, it is wobbling all over the place. They're just not sealing up. So there's no question. I mean, these exhaust ones in particular, they are really, really loose. Intake one on number one is, is kind of snug, but you can turn it if you press, if you push it. This one just wobbles around. So there's no way it's supposed to be that way because otherwise the oil can't seal off. It'll go around the seal and down into the uh, valve through the, through the valve guide and the normal clearance that's in here. Um, this is, uh, what, number one intake. Let's check that. Now, there is a standard on that, I'm sure, but I can measure that at a later time. But they feel real good as far as clearance goes on the valve guides. Besides, with this mileage on it, I seriously doubt that would be a problem. Well, let's look at the face of the valve, the seat, rather. These are much better, of course, much cleaner. All right, this is what we need to do. I uh, need to finish disassembling this head, bagging everything up in order, um, and then we'll uh, take a look at some other stuff, flip it around, I'll show you the bottom of it, and then um, give you an idea of what the plan's going to be um, from here, because uh, I'm, there's no question that these shouldn't be doing this. I mean, I've never seen them like that, and there's no way to seal off, so we got to replace them naturally. Age, heat. Now, whether or not... Um, that's providing all that oil going into the bores. I mean, that number four was really, really loose. Number one here isn't quite as loose. All right, folks, this is where we're at, and apologize if the last clips looked uh, like I was indecisive. I was kind of thinking as I was talking, and yeah, I'll edit that down where it doesn't seem as, uh, you know, <laughs> like dumb. But uh, yeah, okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, I have the head pretty well cleaned up. Went down the road to my neighbor uh, who's got the other shop. He's got some better tools to get in here, the bronze uh, wheels for his um, die grinders and stuff. And Okay, so number one, 
uh, when I was down at my neighbor's house who does a lot more work on heads than I do. He does the old Harley stuff and most of them are aluminum heads and so forth. So I was talking to him about the valve stem seals and being the number four in particular was like you could just rock it back and forth on there. He said he's seen that many times before. In fact, he showed me one where a customer brought a bike in and it had a um, similar situation with the oil in the cylinders from the valve stem seals. Somebody tried to put a valve stem seal on that. I should have taken a picture of it. That was the wrong size, and they tried to crimp the bottom of it to get it to snap on. So he's like, I don't know what people are thinking. But anyway, so he said absolutely, in his opinion, that would certainly cause a bunch of oil to come in the cylinders. So, uh, you know, I, I knew that, obviously. And I, I guess I was looking for a little bit of um, reassurance from somebody else that works on these things because, you know, it wasn't like... I really wish I'd seen one that was like tore up, you know, but and then again with these things not sitting down It's about the same situation. I mean these things are not sealing off on the bottom It would actually be easier for oil to get in there because these are lower closer to the oil level than the top of the Of the seal is where the valve stem where the valve stem protrudes through okay So I'm sticking with the valve stem seals being the, the culprit Because over here I'm looking at this a little further and folks, we just don't have any other indication that this is a problem with either the with, the with the oil control rings. Now, granted, the compression was skewed by that oil, but even in the number one cylinder that there wasn't a ton of oil in it, I mean, I think the compression's good on this. I think when we put it together, if I'm right, and it doesn't become oil soaked again, I think we're gonna have, you know, 150 something, 160 PSI compression out of this thing. Just my gut feeling based on doing compression on a lot of these across the frame fours over the years i think we're gonna have really good compression so the only question would be the oil control rings and a viewer brought that up a, a viewer put a comment and said you know you could have bad oil control rings only i said well i know that to myself i said but i just don't have any evidence of it now in this particular motor the way the cam chain wraps around the crank it isn't like the uh, kawasaki's that has that little thing in there that holds the bottom of the cam chain right up against that um, gear where it has no clearance at all. There's some clearance in there, so you can kind of hold the cam chain and drop it down so it's not snagging on the teeth of the gear and bar this motor over manually pretty easily without even touching the chain. So I did that a few times because I needed to move it around to do bore checking, which is what I'm getting to now. But while I was doing that, you know, it's not the real deal because I'm not spinning it very fast, but I don't see a lot of oil coming up in here. I don't see any really. It feels pretty much normal. So I know that's not a valid test, but it's the only thing I got to go off of. And you know, if it were me, if it were mine, I'd pull this off. I would just shotgun it. But unfortunately we can't do that with the customer's budget limitations apparently and other factors. So um, pretty much the budget. So we're gonna have to leave it because again, I just don't have any firm evidence that there's any problems in here. If there was some scoring, if they were completely whacked out as egg-shaped in size, which they're not, yes, those two issues, I talked to them and say, look, we got to do it. It's just the way it is, but I just don't have that situation. All right, so let's talk about sizes. Now, what I ended up doing was I did, I, I set my bore gauge up for the um, nominal size, which I think is 71.5 millimeters, and uh, whatever the imperial conversion for that is, I don't remember right now. And then um, I started checking the way the service manual says, cross and then down, cross, you know, two points each, top, middle, and down. Now, I can't get all the way down to the bottom because the pistons are still there, but I can get a good amount of this. And what I'm checking for is the size, diameter-wise, and uh, any taper, and, of course, out around. So let's go over the numbers, and I'll show you what we got. We're a little borderline on some, but uh, here's our numbers here. Cylinder bore diameter. I'll kind of read them off, and you can see them yourself. All right, so... Your this is one through four and cylinder bore diameter taper round, roundness. So here's your diameter taper and roundness, and this is your limit. Okay, so 2.815 is the standard bore size, 2.819 is the limit bore size. Um, you're only allowed a two thou taper and uh, let's see, a four tenths uh, roundness. So they're they're giving you a lot on the, t on the taper, but not much on the roundness, which I guess you could understand. So, number one, we're right at about that four-tenth on roundness, so I'm going to call that just in. 
uh, tapers like five tenths, six tenths, three tenths, and three tenths on um, all the cylinders, so that's really good. And in size wise, we're at 2.816, 817, 8165, and 817. So we're about a little over a thou, thou and a half, maybe close to two over. And um, your what is the uh, tolerance on the uh, 2.819? So four thou, you got four thou limit on that. So the definitely the diameter is within, I would say the roundness with the measuring tools I have is within uh, barely, you know, my dial board gauge isn't measured in tenths, it's measured in thousands. But, you know, I've been reading dial indicators and micrometers for a long, long time. So I can kind of get a feel for four or five or eight tenths or whatever. And so I'm pretty confident that's about what it is. So I would say we're good there. Um, I've only checked one of the valves right now, number two exhaust, because I just want to put my hands on and I cleaned it up, and uh, the stem that is, and I cleaned up the uh, valve guides themselves on the inside with a plastic, um, you know, uh, brush, like a little rotary brush, plastic, and some WD-40, because they're pretty grungy. And this is the only measurement I have right now on that. And the way that works is uh, we have intake over here and exhaust, and we got guidance stem, guidance stem, okay? So if we go over to exhaust here, the um, clearance, what you're, what you're really measuring is not only the diameter of the valve stem and the uh, inside diameter of the valve guide, but the overall clearance, and that's the important thing. So in this case, for number two exhaust, okay, my guide limit is 2.756 plus 6 tenths. So we're at 2.755, so in other words, the guide, of course, is an inside diameter, so it can't be any bigger than that. Bigger, so it's 2.2755, so that's within, and the stem being an outside diameter, we're looking at it being smaller, we don't want it smaller, so 0 0.2756 uh, minus a thou, and oh, uh, plus a one, uh, let's say one and a half thou, one, one thou six tenths, and we're at 2.743. All right, so we are a little bit, uh, just a little bit lower than that, but we're within tolerance. And if you subtract the two, you get a clearance of 1,002 tenths. And so the clearance is supposed to be point, uh, 1 thousandths to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 tenths. So 1,000 to 0, 0, 0,022. So we're right in the middle, not, well, actually we're to the tighter side, so we're pretty good there. And again, that's the only one I've done so far. Um, Oh, I put it in number ones, didn't I? That is actually number two. I got to move this, but uh, yeah, disregard that part. I got to, I got to fix that. But I know it was number two exhaust. I did. I just put it in the wrong spot. So yeah, that's um, that's where uh, we're at as far as numbers go. So I'm confident that the other ones are probably going to measure out the same because this thing don't have a lot of mileage on it. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to stick with because again, I mean, I'd like to pull the jug off and just redo the rings and bring it down to my neighbor buddy's shop and uh, have him just run his honing machine through and put a swirl on it you know I could do that because you know if we take a half thou out we're still well within and but you know I just don't have the evidence to do that a little bit of carbon ridge on the top it's not a wear ridge on the bore we'll clean that up with um, the appropriate uh, you know Probably just a little WD-40 in a rag. This stuff is just coming off pretty easy, actually. Yeah, I can just take it off by hitting my finger in there. And then clean the top of the, of the um, cylinder block off using the appropriate method. And then uh, I, got a, I got a gasket set, a full gasket set. It's the only thing I can get right now. I can't get individual or, like, top-end gaskets. I have to buy the whole gasket set. It's the only thing available. Everything else is out of stock. It's aftermarket, but... They don't, you can't find an OEM head gasket. If you did, it would be new old stock and be sitting on a shelf. I don't know how old it is. but So we're going to be doing aftermarket gaskets. I've used this particular brand before, not had a problem with them. So we're going to get this, uh, get all the parts in. I've got, uh, I ordered some valve lapping compound because I'm out. Um, I, uh, I'm, everything I'm going to do on this head is directly out of the service manual which is pretty interesting because it's old school they're talking about resurfacing the head by putting it on a surface plate with wet or dry sandpaper attached to it and then running it back and forth in a swirl pattern to uh, get your head nice and flat and I kind of did that a little bit I have a different methodology for it to clean it up with the same kind of materials 
So to check for flatness, what I did was I took four uh, one, two, three blocks, one, two, three, four, and I cleaned up the spots on the other side of the head where the head cover sits. So I put the head upside down so the ceiling surface is up. And I put my Starrett 196 plunge indicator into this chuck and run it down and then ran it across after I made sure that there wasn't any rock or anything, you know, because I stoned the table and I cleaned up that casting on that head, you know, those surfaces best as possible. But, you know, as long as it's not rocking, you can reasonably assume that it's nice and flat. And it sure was. I ran that indicator across. Uh, I got some footage here. I'll show you that. And uh, the only, the worst I ever got was just under a thou. And that was over on this side uh, when the table was way over there because I don't have a whole lot of um, X travel when it comes to that. So this table's way over to the side and the table actually could be lifting a little bit from that weight down this way. So, but going across X and Y on that surface is virtually dead nuts. So I know that that surface is not wavy or it doesn't have any, you know, holes in it as far as digs. It's nice and flat, which kind of gets us to a point where maybe we can put to bed the possibility of it overheating because uh, I originally said that maybe it overheated. Well, I would think that we would have some head warpage if that was the case. So we have pretty much zero, and we, have, we do have zero in that situation that I can detect. Um, and you know, it's a thousandth indicator, but that's close enough. So uh, yeah, we're, um, we're gonna be fine in that area. And I've got this prepped up pretty good, as I said before, uh, do a little bit more detail to it, and then um, she'll be ready to go back on. So again, in summary, what we're going to do is we are going to finish cleaning the head and it's going to go back together once the valves are lapped and I do all the testing that is uh, in relationship to doing that. And then, you know, measuring the uh, valve springs and doing the whole thing, making sure everything's where it's supposed to be. And then, like I said, lapping each valve, um, testing that the way the, way the uh, service manual says is to, you just put your plug back in and you fill this chamber up with like solvent you know like gasoline even or something like that and see if it doesn't drain through seriously that's what's in the service manual and that's an old trick that I would I've done in the past anyway but you know I, I'll, I'll figure it out but we're gonna use some Prussian blue on the surface when I get done with lapping it and cleaning it and then we'll run that valve by hand pushing down on it take the valve out and see if we got good contact both on the seat and on the valve itself. So that's gonna be all part of the stuff that we'll do later on. But say so yeah, that's um that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions about that, unfortunately it is what it is and that's where we're going with this. Until I have more definitive evidence that this has a problem in the rings, which I don't believe it does at this point, um, we're gonna be putting it back together as is. All right, folks, that's it on video three, the head part. You have been duly updated, and uh, now you know what's going on. And uh, ho I wish I did, but you do. So that's what we're going to do. Did I make a mistake? Maybe. We'll find out. But uh, I've, I've been wrong, what, once? Maybe twice. I don't know. I'll have to go look at my log. I'm not sure what the service limit on being wrong is look that up too I don't think I am though to be honest with you I gotta follow my gut on this one and my gut tells me I'm going in the right direction so yeah hopefully I'm right and save the customer some unnecessary labor parts and uh, it'll run great especially after I take care of all the vacuum line and the other issues in regards to the carb intake side maybe go through the carbs real quick make sure they're right do a synchronization a whole bit. Customer said it ran good. I'm going to tell you right now, it'll run better when I get done with it because half those vacuum hoses were cracked and there was no way that they were sealing and this thing must have had vacuum leaks like a freaking Hoover. So I would say that I think we're going to get it running a lot better. I don't know if I'm going to film any of the head work uh, in regards to lapping or anything like that, doing the valve stuff. i got to kind of concentrate on that. Without being distracted, I'm sorry, probably not gonna. So I'm not sure what video four will entail. It may actually be all back together by then, but I gotta get moving. And I got this Virago over here I gotta get into as well. 
So if you like what you saw, don't hesitate to subscribe, ring the bell, share the video, like the video. You know what to do. You're smart people. You watch YouTube. So, hey, yeah. So until next time, thanks for watching. Don't just repair, restore. We'll see you on the next one.